So in this video, we're gonna continue talking about domain and range, specifically of functions that are given algebraically. So we have the equation of the function. In the previous video, we looked at functions for which we had to make sure we didn't divide by zero, the first of our two domain rules. In this video, I'm gonna look at functions where we have to make sure we don't take the square root of a negative number. So for example, here's a function, g of x equals the square root of x minus five. If you stare at this thing for a minute, you might be able to convince yourself that there's no values of x that will cause me to divide by zero. I don't have any fractions, I don't have any division going on here. There's nothing that will cause the first domain rule to go wrong. All I have to do is make sure that I don't divide by a negative number. Again, we have our two domain rules here, and there's nothing that will cause me to divide by zero, so I can completely ignore this first one. However, I do have this radical, this square root sign here. So this second rule is gonna be very important. I have to make sure that I don't take the square root of a negative number. What this function is taking the square root of is x minus five. So what I have to do is make sure that that x minus five is not a negative number. How do you write is not a negative number mathematically? Well, you can do it with inequalities. You could say that x minus five has to either be greater than or equal to zero. As long as x minus five is greater than or equal to zero, x minus five is not negative, so I won't be taking the square root of a negative number. So to figure out the domain of this specific function, all I have to do is solve this inequality. Unfortunately, solving inequalities is a little bit tricky, as we'll see with some examples coming up, but for this specific inequality, it's pretty easy. We can just add five to both sides and get x is greater than or equal to positive five. What do you mean x is greater than or equal to positive five? Well, let me draw you a picture. Here's my number line, here's positive five. I want x to be equal to positive five, so I'm gonna shade in this circle, or some number greater than positive five, like six or five and a half, or 5.1 or 300 or whatever. If I want a visual representation of my answer, a picture that shows my answer, I'm done, here it is right here. Ah, but I don't want a picture that represents my answer. You told me that we're always gonna be expressing our answers in interval notation. Yeah, so how do I write this in interval notation? Well, you might think to write five infinity in parentheses, kind of like we were doing up here. And that would almost be right. I do wanna talk about one interval worth of numbers, and it's all the numbers from five up to infinity. So I am starting at five, and I am going up to infinity. However, I have to indicate to the reader that this five should be included as part of my answer. Up here, when I was talking about this interval of all the numbers greater than six, but not equal to six, I wrote that as six comma infinity in parentheses here. I can't write five comma infinity in parentheses here because analogous to what we have up here, that would be all the numbers that are greater than five. But I don't just want the numbers greater than five, I want five and the numbers greater than five. How do I indicate to the reader using interval notation that five is part of this interval? The answer is instead of putting parentheses on the five, you put brackets. You write it like this. This means to the reader that this five is part of your answer. This parenthesis on this six right here means that six is not part of your answer. It's that simple. Brackets means you include them. Parentheses means you don't include them. Oh, okay, so I put some brackets over here. Well, this is a minor technical point, but the answer is no. Anytime you have an infinity or a negative infinity, you should always put parentheses on those and not brackets. It's not super important for the purposes of our class, but I might as well teach you the right way to do things. Because infinity and negative infinity aren't real numbers, they're concepts maybe is a way you can think about it for the purposes of our class, we can't include them as part of our answers. So we can never put a bracket on an infinity or a negative infinity. So if I want all the numbers that are greater than or equal to five, the way I would write that in interval notation is like this. Let's try another example. The domain of the square root of 10 minus 2x. This looks pretty similar to what we did up in six, right? We don't have to worry about dividing by zero because there's no fractions going on here, but we do have to make sure we don't take the square root of a negative number. Ah, I got this. All I do is take what's underneath the radical, the 10 minus 2x in this case, instead of the x minus five, and set that greater than or equal to zero. Yes, that's true, solve this inequality, but be careful. Solving inequalities is hard. Let me try to illustrate that challenge by doing something the wrong way. It's tempting to look at this and be like, well, I guess I'd subtract 10 from both sides and I get negative 2x is greater than or equal to negative 10. I'm subtracting 10 from both sides and then divide both sides of the equation by negative two. Let's see, negative 2x divided by negative two is just x and negative 10 
divided by negative two, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, so I guess I'd get a five over here. I guess my answer would be that x is greater than or equal to five, that the domain of this function includes all numbers that are greater than or equal to five. So six, for example, should be in the domain of this function. But wait a minute, when I try to figure out g of six over here, I'm taking the square root of 10 minus two times six. Two times six is 12. I'd be taking the square root of whatever 10 minus 12 is. 10 minus 12 is a negative number, it's negative two. I'd have to figure out what's the square root of negative two. I can't do that because we're only dealing with real numbers, the square root of negative two is undefined. Wait, what just happened there? We tried putting six into this machine and we got an undefined output. Six is not in the domain of this function g. But over here, when I solved this inequality, I said that the domain included all numbers that are greater than or equal to five, and six is clearly greater than or equal to five. So what went wrong over here? Well, what went wrong is that solving inequalities is hard. Let me show you another way you could have solved this inequality. Instead of subtracting 10 from both sides, you could have added 2x to both sides and got 10 is greater than or equal to 2x. And then at this stage, if you divide both sides by two, you get five is greater than or equal to x. 5 is greater than or equal to x is the same as x is less than or equal to 5, right? This is bigger than this is the same as saying this is smaller than this. x is less than or equal to 5 is very different than what we got over here. Wait, it seems like we did legitimate mathematical steps on both sides. So what went wrong? What made this the wrong way? Well, it's a really subtle thing that occurs when you're dealing with inequalities that you don't have to worry about when you're dealing with equalities. If this were an equal sign, I'd get the same answer either way and I'd be fine. But because this is an inequality, I have to be careful anytime I multiply or divide both sides of the equation by a negative number. It turns out that anytime you multiply or divide both sides of the equation by a negative number, you have to flip the inequality. So what I really should have done is at this stage, when I divided both sides by negative two, this would be an x and this would be a five, but I'd have to remember, like big red flag would go up, oh, that was a negative number I divided both sides by, so I need to flip this inequality around. A way you can get around that is by doing your algebra a little bit differently so you don't have to divide by a negative number like we did over on this side. Either way is totally fine as long as you're getting this as your answer. The domain includes all numbers that are less than or equal to positive five, not all numbers that are greater than or equal to positive five, as I kind of illustrated over here when I showed you that six was not in the domain. What I'm saying is the correct answer over here would be all the numbers from negative infinity up to positive five, right? That's everything that's less than or equal to five. I never put brackets on infinities, but since I do want to include this five as part of my answer because of the less than or equals part, I put a bracket right here. I wanna do a few more examples showing you some of the problems that can arise when you're trying to solve inequalities because it gets pretty hard, but I also wanna segregate things in these videos so that you know exactly what you need to know for this class, which would include both of these two examples, and things that maybe would be a little bit advanced for you to ever get tested on in this class, but you should have at least seen, which is what I'll go over in the next video.